Hi everyone, it's your favorite poetry channel, the one and only Podcar Circle. Rolling as we always do, like proud Mary, or to put it another way, going up in smoke. How many of you millennials have ever seen the comedy movie Cheech and Chung? Not many, I guess. But most baby boomers would, I believe. Yeah, well, no harm in asking, right? A little morning humor is good for the health. And that's why we chose the name Podcar, so we can shoot it from many angles. It's not like most traditional established names. Again, again, the weather is not doing so good, even though it's a a Sunday morning. Its, it's drabiness seems to be becoming a, a persistent feature these days. In fact, I was going to do this video yesterday with the same weather in the backdrop. But my elder daughter came by and so we were all pretty much taken up. Um, she and I are working on republishing her first book of poems she wrote when, she, when we were in Guyana. Um, I'm trying very hard to get her to take up writing back again. I'm trying very hard to, to get her to take up writing back again. She started writing poetry be even before me as a child when we were living in Belgium and she didn't even know English at all. She didn't even know English at all that well. She was going to a French Catholic school at the time. Now the most famous line from one of her poems I recall was Jupiter hiding behind another planet. Can you imagine that? That alone will tell you how poetic she was at an early age. Okay, so enough about my small talk. Uh, for, um, <clears throat> okay, so enough about my small talk uh, as a way of introduction. Okay, so enough about my small talk by way of introduction. Now, now what has everyone been doing lately? What has everyone been doing lately? From the looks of it, I see that Haiti's Noriega managed to outlive his usefulness eventually and that the Warhawks are at it again, drumming up the regime removal chant to take another bite at the little bad boy in the Caribbean, you know who. Cuba, of course. Over here, I read in one of the newspapers that the popular Caribbean festival Caribano will again be put off due to the more popular virus. Things are really tough on performance artists nowadays. People are really anxiously fed up of doing Zoom shows. It is not as fun and entertaining as a live performance. The pan men are also complaining about getting a raw deal when it comes to funding for the arts. Apparently there are some complaints going around too about transparency in the Caribbean, Caribana organizers. So it's, it's, it's not much different too uh, with writing and publishing. The road is long and full of rejection. He ain't heavy, is, he's my brother, is certainly not a favorite tune you can hear on this particular highway. If you are new, Johnny come lately, trying to get some funding for the arts or for your writing, for, for your writing project from the institutional establishments. Guess what, you have to be published by a traditional publisher before, be it a magazine, a newspaper, or a book. Not even if, if you try on your own, you know, like most self-publishers. Not to mention, it can take a lifetime, a lifetime to sail through the traditional publishing process. So what does this mean? It means that if you're new to the publishing world, you have to play by the rules and stay in line. You have to play by the rules and stay in line. You have to be a gentleman because you're at the end of an infinitely long waiting queue, much like... Mr. Beetlejuice and his number ticket. Unless, of course, you're lucky and you're another Charles Bukowski. So, thank you, Amazon, for opening a door for the new and not so famous writers. Okay, uh, I'm u already using up a lot of my time uh, for this morning. Um, and uh, we haven't even got to what I intended to talk about, which is about my book. And, uh, 
reading some ex excerpts from it, uh, like, like most authors would do at a book signing ceremony. Unfortunately, though, this is not a book signing, and I don't have a book with me in the first place. My author's copy is not going to be delivered until around the end of this month, or early August, uh, so they say. I can't, so I can't even show you a book as we speak. Some kind of a logistical marketing nightmare, I understand. If you're in the US or UK, you might, you might be luckier to get it faster than I am here in Canada. By the way, for those of us who are joining us for the first time, um, my book, Aging Towards My Freedom, is available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback format. Please note that. I'll tell you what I'll do, um, since we're already running out of time, and because I want to focus in more depth on each of the four themes covered in the book, Aging with Freedom, the Art of Love, Eros, and Acts of Defiance. Today I was going to talk about the first part, Aging with Freedom, but I'll leave it for the next episode, if that's okay. So before I go, however, I'll, I'll read one of the poems in the first section. It, it is, in fact, the second poem um, of the book. Um, because I want, to set, I want to set the mood and the tone uh, for my next appearance. OK? Uh, this one is called Apologies Regretted. A world without bombs without the fear of foreigners presuming to take over their countries, their jobs, their women, their culture, without the superficiality of apologies, insincere, insincere promises, insincere promises of we can and we will, people who think for themselves, and people who let others think for them. Virtual reality at its best in an age of the new normal where distance and hiding behind a mask constitute the preferred mystery of romance. The ladies burn themselves at the stake like modern Jeanne d'Arcs but only much older. Martyrs regretting and refusing to apologize, but rising up poetically from their ashes. People who believe in forgiveness and people who don't forgive, and people who don't forgive. Things we see when we are young and things we don't anymore because we are older. Snowflake boomers using respect to roadblock millennials fighting to make this world a better place. And all others daring to challenge their illusions. The aesthetic of a parents, the aesthetics of a parents that can only fictitiously express itself in lateral languages of a certain kind. People who think outside the box and people who are afraid of leaving their boxes. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, something to mull over until we meet again. So until then, I'm wishing you a pleasant Sunday and thank you.